Hey guys, Cody Schwab here, and today in this video, I'm going to show you a bunch of different artworks that I've done. And it's not to necessarily show you the artwork. Really what this video is about is to kind of give you some ideas of, of abstract art and maybe inspiration on abstract art that you can create yourself. And I'll kind of explain how I, I made each piece and the different, um, like the styles that I do. And, and a little bit of how I made each one. So it might be a little bit longer video, but it's really just to kind of give you ideas on how to, on what kind of abstract art to make. Because if you're just new to it, um, or if you're stuck and you've done the same kind and you're kind of looking for ideas of different things to do, um, maybe this will help. So I'll show you about 10 artworks, something like that, and just kind of explain them. So we'll go ahead and jump right into that, okay? So the first one is this massive piece um, called Somewhere Out There. This is uh, all scraped. So this is a scraped piece. I mean, you can kind of see the lines. You can see that the, it has the long lines going across, um, uh, you know, the, the lines coming up. Um, <clears throat> I actually really like this piece. It's one of my favorites. And I've really kind of been into the scrape style lately. Um, basically, I made this piece with corrugated cardboard and of course my gloss enamel that I use for everything. Um, basically, I just, you know, I had my I created my piece the long way and then kind of scraped against the grain um, and that's how I created this piece and I mean it's again it's really simple you just can create your design and then kind of scrape scrape the paint along the same way like so I took the, the paint and made the lines and then scraped it that way and then scraped against it to kind of create um, the, the look that it has now. This piece is called Golden Reef. Um, this is actually a poured painting, which I don't do a whole lot of poured paintings. Um, I used my classic gloss enamel, but the gold is actually not gloss enamel. The gold was, uh, I don't remember the brand, but it was just a, one that you can get at like Michael's. And it was a regular craft gold. Um, let me actually kind of zoom in. You can see the like, actually the, the waves and stuff is because the gold actually was breaking apart and pulling away from the black. And the thing with gloss enamel, like... I use, you know, very high grade gloss enamel. This is what happens if you try to mix paints. You can kind of see like it, it cracked and separated. I mean, it kind of looks cool and it, and it looks like it's part of the piece, but I don't personally like it. Um, but anyway, this one was all poured. So I literally just poured the black on there and then I, I took the gold and I poured it through the black and then kind of tilted the canvas back and forth to create this almost... Uh, wavy look or almost like cor coral reef which is what I was going for. Uh, this piece right here is called Eruption. You might have seen it in some of my other videos. Um, this is what I call a splash piece. So the background was actually scraped kind of like this um, and I made the background like with uh, purple and red. That's why it looks almost violet. Um, and then the actual paint I actually splashed on there. So I took cups of liquid paint and threw it onto the canvas um, in like a in the direction that it's going, and that's how I created that like splash look. And then I let it dry. Um, so I did the background, let it dry, and then I also did like the splatter around the back, and then I did the the actual design, and that's how I created that one. I really like that piece. It just warped, which you can see in one of my other videos. Um, that's what I didn't like about it, but I like the piece overall. Uh, this was one of my earlier ones I did last year. Um, this one, the design, the red design is actually a brush. Uh, the top ones, oh, so you won't see this in my other videos because I don't do it anymore. But when I started, I would put liquid paint, so really wet paint, into um, like condiment bottles or those barbecue, like the bottles you can get from like Walmart or the beauty salons where it's like, it's got the really thin spout or whatever and you can pour it out. So that's, that's why I made those black and white lines. And then the splatter was actually with a brush. Um, so it's kind of Pollock, more modern than anything. Um, and that is the ties of the bind. This is, uh, you're, I hate the glare for this piece. I'll kind of go to the side. Um, this is a piece I called Dance Till Dusk. I think that's what it was called. Um, basically this piece is, you know, a Pollock style piece. Did a lot of gray, kind of dark gray in the background. And then a lot of line work with white, black, and, and orange. Um, it's the same color that you see in the back is what's on the painting. Um, now with this one, I actually used, I believe I used the, 
the rubber spatulas to make those lines, which you can see in another video on how I, you know, make the lines that I do. But anyway, um, like in the tools that I use for Pollock style paintings. So that's what that was that one. Um, you can see a painting up there. I'm not going to get it down. That is Distant Memories. That's one of my favorites. But it's kind of in the style of this one. So you can see it on my site, but basically it's another scrape painting uh, with pink, purple, and white. Uh, let's move on. We've got uh, this one from within. This is a super classic Pollock style painting. I mean, there's literally like, if there was ever a Pollock style painting, this would be it. Um, like it's Pollock like through and through, right? Um, this also is kind of like the style of a guy named Ty De La Venta. Uh, he does similar work like that. Um, but anyway, like this is literally just layer and layer and layer of overlapping lines um, of black, white, and silver. There's also red and a dark turquoise in the back. Um, but yeah, that's literally just taking like, I think it was the back of a paintbrush over and over and over with the lines. And that is how I created that piece. Um, I still like the Pollock style. I just haven't done it as much lately. Well, I kind of have and I'll show you. All right, moving on. We have this piece called Ecstatic Vibrations. This this piece actually isn't even on my site yet, but it will be. Um, let me kind of scoot back and you can see it. So this piece uh, actually has a lot of lines. Basically, I, I did the, you know, I took the rubber spatulas and the sticks, the, uh, the stir sticks, and just dipped it in the paint. I don't even think I diluted the paint on these ones. I think for the thin lines, I don't, usually because it creates those lines and if you dilute it then it starts to drip like this on the sides but if you want the solid lines you just literally dip it in the paint like the stir stick or the rubber spatula and then you just kind of make those lines as you go and that's how you do it and then obviously the black and white and there's also gray around the sides um, almost kind of looks like a chalkboard or galaxy or something but anyway uh, the that was the black and white dots are really wet paint so I did dilute it for the dots. So if you want the drip, you would dilute the paint. If you don't want the drip, then you just literally dip the brush in there and paint. But again, I use gloss enamel, so it's gonna be more wet than regular acrylic. So just as a heads up. Uh, then there's a piece behind it called Cascading Crosses. It's literally just a bunch of crosses that I made by the paintbrush. I literally just took the same paintbrush and I had four colors to start. I just had the blue, the red, the white, and the black. And just using that same paintbrush over and over created these other shades of these other colors. So this this gray, this light blue, um, this darkish purplish blue in the back, um, this little shade up here. So all these different shades actually came out of four colors. So that was kind of just a fun experiment with a brush, but that was all brush work. And using, I used four colors, but I just used the same brush over and over and it made that. Uh, this is Modern Royalty. This was another splash piece, kind of like this one. So very similar construction on this one. Um, what I really like about this piece is it has these these really like almost straight lines, not quite straight, but you know, they, they're straight in the fact that they go all the way down and kind of create like a checkered pattern in the background. Um, that was all scraped. So the background I scraped with, uh, with blue, white, black and gold. So I put the paints down and I just kept scraping it into a pattern until I liked it. And then the, obviously the splash and the lines are from somewhat diluted paint, a little bit diluted, but not super wet. Um, and I think I used the paint stick for that. And then this is the splash work. So literally I had wet paint in a cup, a uh, solo cup, and I just kind of like poured it in a design and threw it. And that's what made the splash right there. Um, this piece right here is called Fire and Ice. Uh, this is an all scraped painting. So literally all I used was red and blue. That's it. Uh, kind of reminds me of like, well, Fire and Ice, but also kind of like, I guess a cop light or something. I don't know. But I just like this piece because it's it's really simple, but it, it, it's like simple, but it's super vibrant. I mean, you you probably see it. It's, it's really vibrant. Um, but I, I really, really like this piece. And I made this with just the two colors, red and blue. Um, the blue is actually Clark and Kensington. The red, I believe, was Dun Edwards. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's right um, from what I was trying. But um, the paint was just a little bit diluted just to kind of get it to move. And I made this all with that, um, 
little scraper, the little, uh, what is it called? Come on, what's it? Uh, I felt like the squeegee. That was all with a squeegee. So this was all with a single squeegee. I just pour some of the paint on the squeegee or on there, kind of scrape it into a design, then pour a little more. I kept going because like it started off purple and then I just kept going in layers until it was, it was done. Um, you can see a really big painting over there. I'm not going to dwell on that. That's um, levels literally scraped, I think, with the squeegee. Um, yeah, so I just poured the paint, then scraped it down. Super easy. Lastly, let me show you this piece right here. This is a piece I call Southwestern Samba. So there it is. You can see that it's a very, it's again, a Pollock style, the gestural abstraction. A lot of dots, a lot of lines. It's not completely filled like that one over there. Sorry for the floor, it's a mess, I have kids. Um, but you can see a lot of the line work through it with the black, the white, the orange, red, there's copper in there as well. Um, but essentially this piece was, um, you know, I was just making another piece like this and I really wanted a big piece that also was, you know, really vibrant. I guess the thing that I like about the Pollock style paintings that, and there's another piece right there, um, that is Monochromatic Dream. I have that above my desk because it's one of my favorite paintings. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that's, that's a lot of the paintings I have in the, around the house. I actually have more in my room. Um, I have more in the garage. I have a lot more. But I, I, I really just wanted to show you this video because I wanted to give you an idea of some of the things that you could do and how I make paintings because there's really no secret. I mean, I thought about it for a long time. I was like, oh, I can't tell people my how I do it or they won't want to buy it. But the truth is, is like if I just share that with you, then you can make those incredible paintings yourself. Um, so that's it. That's how I made all these paintings that you see. Um, if you really enjoyed this video and you thought it was helpful, please let me know in the comment section. Uh, be sure to check out my, some of my other videos on the, the tools that I use, the methods that I use, stuff like that. Um, and if you feel like supporting me, I'd really appreciate that. You can you know, buy any one of the paintings you see here. Or if you just want to help me out with supplies or on Patreon, uh, there's links for that too. So anyways, I hope that you have an awesome rest of your day. God bless and uh, take care, okay?